you should have taken the plane home today, right? You guys are tired, so am I. But I'm, I'm presenting you this most complex landscape we have. Does anyone know what this is? The famous CNCF landscape. Very, very daunting, right? One thing you may not know, though, is we actually allow you to filter by the project moving level, whether it's graduation or incubation, or you can order by tag. Very nice, right? My name is Celine Sang. I'm with Solo.io. And I'm Karina Angel with Red Hat. And we couldn't, the whole job of the, we are here to represent the CNCF Technical Oversight Committee, who provide technical direction to the CNCF community and help us put the project in the right moving level. And it's impossible for us to do the work without each of you in the community, particularly our technical advisory group. If you're not familiar with CNCF project moving level, there are sandbox which is early incubation, uh, very early uh, innovators. There are incubation, uh, which is early adopters, and there are graduated project, which is um, a lot of people start adopting it in production. Uh, one thing really interesting is you see moving trends. We added more graduate project each year. We added more incubation and sandbox project each year. And this year, we also archived the nine projects in total. This is because the CNCF TOC community are very actively looking at the project health in the CNCF ecosystem. If the projects are not active, we're just going to put them into archive. Now, please join me and give a big round of applause to all the graduated projects this year. We're so proud of them. Now, let's get into the real exciting part, which is the technology. The first one, I want you to guess in your head, you probably guess it, is cloud native and AI. I actually was building a generative AI application myself a few weeks ago, and I was thinking about what large language model should I be using? Do I need a vector database? And how am I going to run this thing? Do I run it in Kubernetes? What infrastructure am I going to use? How do I operate it? And how do I actually observe it and how do I secure the communication for my microservices? And how do I debug and troubleshooting? And finally, I was able to present a demo app, not production ready, at Istio Day. And uh, I was able to take a picture of the audience and ask the, my application whether the audience is engaged and what's the mood of the audience. So very, very cool. I got it running, but however, we can do much better than that. It took me a few weeks to get this running. Envision we can provide AI as a platform, as a service, while I, as an AI developer, I could potentially do an AI push, and it would figure out where it should deploy, and what are my requirements, and whether I'm connecting to a large language model LLM in my cluster or outside of my cluster, uh, it could potentially finger all that out for me with resilience, with debuggability, with observability. That's what I would love to see. The next technology area I'm really excited about is cost and going green. In the Kubernetes ecosystem, there's a lot of projects actually helping us with that. There's dynamic resource allocator, there's horizontal and vertical part auto scaling, there's open cost, there's Kata, there's Kepler, right? Amazing tools. But we have still heard our end user keep talking to us, we can't get our costs under control. You know what's the real reason? It's you, right? You are the spender. Like you shopping at your grocery store, you're not putting your budget under control, right? What would be really cool is we can have domain-specific AI knowledge be able to deep learning your spending habit 
deeply understand what your organization goal and budget is, and be able to kind of proactively analyze your spending and then do the work for you. Wouldn't that be amazing? All right. Thank you, Lynn. First of all, welcome to the city I call home. And uh, though you may not have been as excited about the snow on Tuesday as I was. Um, so our next technology area is multi-cluster. And much like the weather in Utah, uh, see, multi-tenancy and multi-cloud are just challenging. Um, and over the years, we've seen multi-cluster emerge as the most popular deployment pattern for Kubernetes as verified during the adopter interviews we do um, as the TOC during project due diligence, um, as well as the end user radar. Adopters have found the multi-cluster pattern easier to manage with better defined security boundaries. And the expectation now is that multi-cluster that projects are multi-cluster capable and will help promote interoperability between clusters. Now, cloud native used to be about what it takes to make Kubernetes work. And now it is about how to make all of these clusters work together with each other and beyond Kubernetes to other cloud native environments. Now, earlier this week, you saw Ricardo Rocha demonstrate multi-cluster batch jobs dispatching using Project Q at CERN. And during our adopter interviews, we spoke with Sean Valeru at LinkedIn about how they use Argo CD to deploy Kyverno security policies across their multi-cluster architecture. There's still so much more the ecosystem can do to enable and visualize the multi-cluster pattern. Our next technology area is simplification. Throughout our adopter interviews, the number one reason we see widespread project adoption is because a project is simple to adopt. There is a clear and understandable governance, a regular release cadence, a clearly defined roadmap, and a well-articulated scope. The more successful projects are abstracting away the complexity from the developer, from the consumer, making the project more observable and transparent from an adopter's point of view. With larger projects, there are more moving pieces, and it is harder to visualize the stack. So when you're designing your APIs, think about how successful you are at capturing that level of complexity and abstracting it away from the human who is trying to manage and use your project. Think about what level of information can be surfaced in a layered fashion so it can be immutable in multiple dimensions. For example, the person who administers the cluster is different from the person who authors a workload. The end user who is adopting your project is focused on the things that matter to that end user and not on the minutia of how your project was created. The SRE who is monitoring the adopter production environment is focused on how simple it is to observe and troubleshoot the technology. If your project is not simple to adopt, end users will move on. Time is money. And that brings us to domain technical reviews. All right. The TOC has recently supplemented the technical due diligence for projects with technical review questions, which are designed to, to prompt design thinking for ready for production projects and architectures. Project maintainers are expected to have designed the project for cloud native use cases and workloads. The TOC is striving for further standardization and to apply production ready principles much earlier 
in a project's life cycle to enable greater adoption. We are looking for how the project has thought about the cloud native software lifecycle day schemas, planning and design for day zero, installation and deployment for day one, post-deployment operations for day two, because it doesn't matter how cool the technology is, what matters is how you can use it. Okay, there are additional things that have to happen to make a project usable to reach that enablement point. For example, a CID, CI CD system and being able to continuously generate artifacts. Enablement is more about the maturity of the technology. What's the security profile? What is the monitoring footprint? Has the project adequately planned for production adoption? This doesn't begin when a project applies for graduation within the CNCF. This should begin with the design and planning phase in Sandbox. In our technical due diligence, we are seeing a number of projects that have had to refactor at the point of incubation, which creates a barrier to further adoption. Front-loading the work gets you crossing the chasm faster. If you introduce your breaking changes much sooner and shift your design for production readiness further left, it is a faster path to adoption and becoming a commodity. We're enabling projects to excel by collecting techniques and patterns from successful projects and developing guidance through the DTRs, guideposts, and more clear criteria Essentially, we have given you the answer key to the test so you can take it sooner. You can find the TOC members in the CNCF TOC Slack channel and the end user tab in the CNCF tab channel. And today we have a public TOC meeting happening at 11.55 and a TOC and tag panel later today at 2.55. We are looking forward to evolving the next 10 years of Cloud Native together with all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much.